and down the rabbit hole we go. Well, hello, Blue Troopers. Hope you're having a good morning. I uh, am going to take us down a little bit of a rabbit hole today. Yesterday, while I was at uh, Hurricane Hobbies, going through those models that they, uh, the used models or the vintage kits they had for sale, I found this ME262 that I had mentioned that it said it was the V9 and the V12 version. One of them had the little low sloped canopy on it, like a racing canopy. And I thought, you know, maybe this was some kind of uh, paper airplane that never flew. And, I consider myself an aviation aficionado. I had never seen uh, that version before, not a real one. So I thought, well, let me look it up and see what it, what the story was on it. And as tends to happen a lot of times, there was a lot of confusion over the subtypes. Uh, some of them called it the V12, some called it the V9, and some called it the, I believe it was H1. And I was thinking, well, they're probably like a company designation for one and a Luftwaffe designation for the other or something like that. And the, the kit is, you know, I, I actually found some people online who built it and they said it was actually a, a not the greatest kit. It didn't have that great of a fit. In fact, some guys bought it just to get the canopy. You're talking about 172nd scale with photo etch and, uh, uh, you know, a, a vacuform canopy, kind of tricky to work with. One guy said he was going to get it just for the canopy so he could put it on a Revell ME262 and that the only real difference was that uh, was, was the low uh, profile canopy. Well, I was like, yeah, I'm trying to find out that this airplane ever really fly. And I'd pretty much given up on it. I was thinking it looks like one of the designs they came up with that never went to operation. They never got it done. But then I found one person who claimed that it set a, a speed record of 634 miles an hour, the fastest version of the ME262 with the UMO 004 engines. And I was like, wait a minute, you think it did fly? And the internet has a lot, but it doesn't have everything. Eventually, I dug in and found a couple of uh, sources that claimed that the airplane did about four flights, did set a record that the only real difference between it and a standard ME262 was the low profile canopy, but that eliminated a lot of drag because uh, the ME262 did have a high visibility sort of bubble top canopy, which is a source of, uh, of great drags, especially the faster you go, the worse it gets. There were disagreements on whether it was the V9 or the V12. It says well, the V9 was used for radio, uh, some experimental radio work, and the V12 was used for the uh, high high speed runs with the low canopy but then you look at the models they always have it marked as v9 even though that's supposed to be possibly the v12 variant and another source said that's actually the h or the hd1 variant like again who comes up with these nomenclatures but then i found this actual photographs of that airplane flying i don't speak german so i couldn't read the article but uh, that site does say that it did three or four flights before it was damaged in an accident. Uh, I, I don't have any details on what happened. And that the two later versions actually were sent to the airfield but never flown. I don't recall. I've read every book on everything the Americans and Brits captured after the war and the Russians and they that never entered the picture anywhere so I'm guessing the stuff was destroyed. But anyway, if it actually existed, but apparently it appears that there was this uh, one off and it did make a few flights and supposedly set this speed record around a thousand kilometers per hour by one source or 634 miles an hour by another source which was faster than the regular uh, ME262 but I spent I want there's a couple hours of my life I'm never going to get back just over this one little rabbit hole because of this kit that I saw because the box art I thought was done wrong and it turns out no it's it was exactly what it was supposed to be so then it turns out that this kit, uh, I believe it's an MCM kit, is actually fairly rare and hard to find. So now I may have to go back to Hurricane Hobbies and buy the thing. I don't know, just for its rarity. You know, not because I don't have any other models to deal with. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it'll be one of those things, if I get it, I'll go, oh, I spent money on that. And if I don't, I'll kick myself for not doing it someday. Somebody is just not happy. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, apparently someone needs my attention, so I'll see you guys later. And as always, model on.